What's up, YouTube? Good morning. Okay, <laughs> I have to go through this yet again. Another one of these discussions. They keep coming up, and they keep we keep discussing this whole Ryzen thing, and we keep discussing the the um, the issue with the 1080p and the frame rates and all this thing, all this mess. Let's just be honest. I'm going to be completely honest with you, with everybody, real quick. Gaming ain't squat when it comes to taxing a processor. Gaming is ain't jack. My five-year-old i7-970 plays Battlefield 1 just fine. But guess what? A brand new i7-7700 can't render as fast, video as fast, as the 1800X. Well, it probably can fa render as fast as this whole computer. But the, because... Gaming doesn't in jack. I used to think that if you built a gaming system, that you were going to build a system that was really powerful, that was really good. Like that was the top end stuff. That's not even close to the top end stuff. The top end stuff is workstations. It's not gaming. So the AMD FX processors. The problem that we had with the AMD FX processors, and the reason why I haven't bought AMD in since the '90s, really. The problem that we had with the AMD FX processors is they had no guts, so they weren't good in, in gaming or in rendering because they didn't they didn't have the power, they didn't have the horsepower that they needed. So, the true test of a processor is how much horsepower it actually has, not how many frames per second it can get in gaming. That's irrelevant. That's an that's a thing that's easy to fix. You can't fix. You can't make, okay, you can't take an i7-7700K and make it render video faster than a than an 8-core or 12-core, you or 10-core. You can't do it. You can't make that processor at 12 gigahertz, that processor might be able to keep up. But it's not even close. The, the disparity between rendering speeds, how fast it renders on that, and as compared to like, an, like a 4-core, a quad-core, or whatever is it's too great so no matter what you do you'll never be able to get that to render faster no matter no amount of optimization will make a quad core render video as fast as a an eight core or six core the whole reason why i went from an i7 920 which was a four core quad core eight thread processor to a six core is to have more cores that could render video. That's the whole reason why I moved from one processor, processor to the next. They gamed about the same. Gaming was about the same. Even if I overclocked the 920 much faster, it games the same. I can play almost any game on this processor. The limiting factor I have is my video cards, is a GTX 760. But I can tell because it'll go, it'll go as fast as it can go. But the processor has no problem keeping up. It's not and this is a five-year-old processor. That's no problem keeping up. But when it comes to rendering, the rendering of video and and using effects, after effects, and things that actually t are hard on a process. I was watching a thing and they were like, oh, look, see, here's the problem. It was taxing one processor at 100%, like 90%. And then the others were dropped off like 40. And that's typical of a game. I'm like, that's typical. I showed you in my last video my processor all being taxed at 100%. So which is which is using the processor more, rendering or gaming? There's not a game out there that taxes all processors at 100%. There's not. I haven't seen one. If you can point me to a game, please leave a comment below and tell me which game taxes all cores, all processes at 100%. Please let me know because I haven't seen one. But what I have seen, rendering any kind of video... Even with a GTX, a CUDA core accelerator, any kind of, I don't care what kind of acceleration you put in it. Almost every single one taxes the processor, all cores, at 100%. So which is harder on, which is harder on a processor? What's the true measure of a processor's performance? Rendering that taxes all cores or gaming that taxes one core? And let's see how fast we can get that one core to spit in and out frames. That's for, that's ridiculous. That's not even a, why are we even judging this? Unless you're just a gamer. That, that should be the thing. Say, if you're just a gamer and you want to get the absolute maximum frames per second, out of your thing, then this is the processor to get. But if you want to do anything else besides game, if you want to do anything else, and then for as far as that goes, if you're just a gamer, go buy a console. 
Because you're done. There's no reason to have a PC unless you have to have 4K video. But wait, you game at 1080, right? Because at 4K, that's just fine. But at 1080, uh-uh. So you must be gaming at 1080. So if you're gaming at 1080 and you want 500, you want 200 frames per second, then go for it. Go get the i7-7700K. Other than that, go get a console. Because that's what you are as a console player with a keyboard and a mouse. That's what you are. Like they said, the consoles are actually becoming PCs. It's just basically a PC in a box. So basically, that's what you have. All they need is a single core, a single thread. That's all they need. But in reality, if you want to see the pro power of an actual power of the processor, you need to have something that does multi-thread and taxes all the cores. It's not 1995. We're not talking about a single core processor anymore or even a dual core processor. We're talking about four core, eight thread. We're talking about six core, 12 thread, eight core, 16 thread. 10 core, 20 thread. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about processors for the modern day. The modern day isn't 1995 with a dual core processor. The modern day is today with multi multiple core processors. There's a reason why Intel and AMD put more than one core in their CPU. There's a reason why. So that they can use more than one core. A gamer doesn't need more than one core because games don't tax the system as hard as a freaking... Not even close. The only thing that a game tax more than rendering is the GPU. Uh, games do not, ta so your GPU bound. Almost every video I've watched over the past five years said if you, before you upgrade a processor, you better upgrade your GPU because the GPU is the most, most important factor, not the processor. The processor keeps up. The GPU can't. And even the processor, even the AMD processors keeping up. Oh, for Christ's sake, it's getting 120 frames per second. It's keeping up. It's just not keeping up as fast as the other one because it's not optimized for the for the thing. This is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous bunch of statements. I can't believe the internet is blowing up over the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I've ever seen. Let's match them for actual power with multi-core threading. Let's try that. Oh, uh, they lose terribly at that. So let's not talk about that. Let's instead talk about a single thread. That's like having a V8 and saying I took I pulled five of the spark plugs out of it because I want to I want to see how much better it runs with one. You know, you're not even this is ridiculous. Why do that? Let's plug in all the spark plugs and use all of them. We can flip that argument right back around on everybody else. Hey, it's not as fast on one on one cylinder. I don't run on one cylinder. I run on eight. Why would I plug in just one cylinder and say that one cylinder is not doing as well? Oh, so you're saying that yours doesn't have the other eight to run on. So you're comparing a single cylinder car to an eight cylinder car and claiming that the single cylinder is much faster. So I'll take the eight cylinder car over the single cylinder car. It's a ridiculous comment. Anyway, peace out, YouTube. Comment below. See what you tell me what you guys think. You think that we should that uh, gaming a game is somehow more taxing than After Effects and, and Premiere rendering out H.264 video at 100%. Pop in. Let's see. Put your money where your mouth is. Pop, show me the game that taxes all CPUs at 100% for hours. Like just 100%, just constant. Show it to me. I want to see it. Because if you can find one game, I'd be surprised that did that. But I can show you multiple programs that do that. I can render in almost any a Adobe app and have that happen. So anyway, <clears throat> my uh, R7 1800X was shipped from Amazon yesterday and it'll be here on Wednesday. I guess through the weekend. It said two day shipping, but uh, it's it's supposed to be here now and saying it'll get here Wednesday. Said it shipped, but it won't be here till Wednesday and it's supposed to be two day shipping. I have no idea. It's it's Sunday today, so I have no idea what's taken, why it's not getting here till Wednesday. It doesn't matter. I don't have a I don't have the the uh, the Asus motherboard yet, and I haven't even ordered the memory because I was waiting to see which memory was going to be the best. But um, I guess I'll just get that Corsair Corsair LPX memory that everybody's getting. See if that's uh pretty good. That looks like pretty decent memory, and it comes in white. I like that. I might just to stay safe. That was one positive thing I saw. A report yesterday. Somebody said that 
the good news is, is they had no crashes and no errors and no kind of problems at all on their AMD system. That's a huge thing for me. If I can render and not have a crash, that's, that's worth keeping. You know, that's great. I'll take it. I'll take it any day of the week. So I'll be glad to give AMD some money just to, just to put some more competition in the thing. If it can keep up with Intel's latest offerings for rendering and stuff and not crashing. It's easy. That's a no brainer. I'm about to get ready to go. I've got to do a engagement shoot today um, out in the country. It's kind of chilly out, but I'm got, I've got an engagement shoot to do today. And you can see I'm sitting here drinking my, my coffee. I got to have my coffee. It's, it's like, uh, it's nine, it's 9 a.m. So I get up, I got up at seven this morning. So, and it's a Sunday, but anyway, I got to have my coffee and my Rand Paul cup. All right. Take it easy, YouTube. I'm out.